this church all you want. That don't get you no kudos with God. We're just doing what we're supposed to do. It's just like paying taxes. You pay your taxes because you're supposed to do it. Don't nobody come from the White House and clap. Hey, oh my God, you paid your taxes. You are awesome. We don't just like tithes. God don't sit up here and applaud because we pay our tithes. That's our kingdom tax. And so many of us live like we want an applause for every little small thing we do. You're going to exhaust yourself. You're going to run out of yourself eventually. And maybe that's the time when God can pour himself in. So he gave the law. But no man can live up to the law. The law has a standard that not, not me nor you, none of us can reach it. And Satan benefits from the law. When we live like we live under the law, Satan benefits. You know why? We fall short of the glory of God when we try to live according to the law. Nobody in here is perfect. But we don't sit around and just gloss in our imperfections. Hey, come on, somebody. We got to know that God, he, he wants me to be strong. I, I, I used to be a drug addict. That, that was my main, that, that was the key to everything was my drug addict. Addiction. Everything was inside of that drug. Then when God delivered me from that, he began to work on all the other stuff, little by little, and it all started to go away. I wasn't focused on it. I wasn't sitting there meditating on it and stuff, talking about, God, I need you to take this thing away. He said, Joe, there's some things I will take away, but what about the stuff you just need to give up? Remember, we're working in this together. That's what grace does. It empowers us to work with God. Can somebody say amen? amen. See, he can't use the angels. Because some people say, pray for the angels to, to come in. And I get it. You know, the certain religions that they, they deal with angels. I mean, we deal with angels. Angels work for us. Did you know that? Yes. They, we don't worship angels. They work for us. I'm going to worship something that, that works for me. Come on, come on. But some people don't know what the Bible says. They don't know in the Bible that it's because when I show certain people that I didn't know that. We make an idol out of stuff we don't understand. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Help me, Jesus. <laughs> so he can't use angels. Can I tell you why? He can't use angels and he can't use men, humans. Because sometimes we can try to make a God out of a man. Oh. He can't use angels and he can't use man because whoever satisfies the death will be. Eternally indebted. Mankind will be eternally indebted to that person. So God said, I'm not using angels and I'm not going to. There was no man that can save us except the God man, Jesus. But I'm going to tell you why. Because there's some ghetto theologians that got an attachment with that, that little demon. That he, he used to be big, but he's getting shorter. And you think because you read the Bible a few times, you can just sit there in your mind and try to, uh, uh, Pastor, I need to correct you. Um, you know, there's a, uh, you know, no, 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 no. Well, you know, when, you, when, when it's time to correct, God will give you the mic. But for now, let's just stay an expository in the Bible. Amen? So God's got to go to someone. And he has to search. There is no man. Because I said, you can find the best man on earth, but it's still at best. He's still a man. And so he said, I can't go to the earth. I'm trying to save it. Because if I could just use a man, there'd be no reason. We could just sit here on the throne and Satan would have never won on the earth. And so God had a, our father... Had to look at Jesus. I know son, listen, you God. Are you willing? Because I know. I created them for us, for me, for you. This is the only plan we got. Are you willing to go? You know the good thing about Jesus? I'm already ready, Father. I'll do it. Amen. You know what? You know what? Then why I'm agitated this morning? Because if our creator can get up himself and say I'll do your will father I, it, 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 it just agitates me about myself and about some, all of us that the smallest things we can't even do can't even just get just begin to give God some of you you ain't even saved because you only give God the chance because you love sin too much but then when something starts to happen when you lose your job when if you got somebody you love about to die now you want to search for God but the good thing about God is that God is like he don't get agitated like me God will still say all right I have happen so you come to me. But can I tell you something? Some of us, we don't even get to that point because time runs out because God's done it time and time again. How can Jesus get up and do something for us and we won't get up and do something for Jesus? Oh, I'm sorry. If you're new in here, I'm not mad. I'm passionate. Amen. Yeah. Turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 6. Too much potential sitting in here. 
And it's time to stand up. It's time to stand up. Quit messing around, man. You know, I mean, we, we walk in with so much sorrow that God says that he can take our sorrows away, but we love our sorrow so much, we don't want God to take it away. We don't feel life unless I got my sorrow with me. He wants to heal you. That's why he said, do you want to be made well? Do you, do, do you and I want to change? Do we want to be different? Because see, listen, if you need to have something in your life, God gave us something in this ministry called a vision where we can get outside of ourselves and start reaching some people that need help. Amen. We always help ourselves. That's why I said, man, I pray. And I, I listen, prophetically, sometimes I can tell with somebody, you're going to lose what you put so much of your faith into. And many of you, your jobs are going to be stripped from you. And I'm not afraid to say that because, you know what, they say, oh, he ain't going to pray that. I'm not praying it. I'm saying it. I'm telling you, you put so much faith that your job has become your God. And he's going to do just like he did with Elijah. Elijah put so much of his trust and his love in that brook and then being fed supernaturally. And God dried the brook up. Because he had to move him from the place of being comfortable and put his trust in what God had provided than God the provider. Isaiah 6 says this. Verse 5 says, Then I said, It's all over. I'm doomed. For I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I lived among the people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's army. Verse 6 says, and Then one of the seraphim angels flew to me with a burning coal. And he had taken it from the altar with the pair of tongs. And he touched my lips with it. And said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. And, and then I heard the Lord asking, who shall I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And I said, now remember, Isaiah's quoting as if uh, he's speaking uh, about a third party and first person speech. And I said, here am I. Send me. I wonder if any of us ever said that to God lately. Uh, uh, God, I know life has been good. You've been blessing me. And I, here I am basking and bathing in all your blessing. But there's people dying everywhere. There's people that, you know, that we got something that they that can help them the same way it helped us. And we're, we, we become selfish and wrapped up in the, what we're doing for God rather than what we're called to be with God. And, and, and then we get all upset and then we're angry and we waste two or three weeks. Basking in our anger, and there's people out there dying. 